Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got a tutorial for you, but it's not going to be in OBS or Vegas, which is what I'm known for at this point. It's going to be in Audition, which is an Adobe program used for vocal recording and editing and mastering. I'm going to be teaching you how to make your voice sound like mine. In my tutorials, I like to kind of strive for quality, sound quality, video quality. That's why you're seeing it in 4K right now, and that's why my voice sounds like it's been mastered or it just sounds pretty good at this moment. At least I think so. So if you want to get your voice to sound like mine, stick around this tutorial. So the first step in making your voice sound as studio professional as possible is the recording environment you're in. Now when you record, you want to reduce the amount your voice reflects off the walls and floors and things like that. So if you're in a hard floored room and you have nothing on the walls, you're going to hear a lot of echo and reverberation in your voice. And it doesn't sound that good when you're kind of trying to do a good tutorial. So one thing you could do is buy acoustic foam and they sell it on Amazon for real cheap, like 20 panels. Uh, you can get sound dampening curtains, you can build acoustic panels, and just mount them up on your wall. You can actually just hang things on the wall, like shirts and just a bunch of objects, and that'll help absorb the sound when you're recording and reduce the amounts of reflections. Now, you're never going to get it perfect unless you're in an absolutely great, perfect studio, or you've built it yourself and invested a ton of money in it. So you're always gonna get a little bit of reverberation or echo, and that's totally fine. Next thing you wanna do is invest in a decent quality mic. It doesn't have to be extremely expensive, like three, $400 shotgun mics, but you don't, definitely don't want it to be a cheap $50, $40 microphone. I mean, you can make those sound pretty good, but they're really limited in what they can do. There's a couple mics you could choose from, different types, and one's called a condenser mic, and that one records a bunch more vocal range, but it also records a lot of background and side noise. So if somebody's vacuuming the other room, a condenser mic can pick that up. What I'm using right here is a dynamic mic, and it basically records what's right in front of it and does a really good job of not recording external noises, like my keyboard and mouse clicks, you barely notice them. So I like using a dynamic mic. This is a Shure SM58. I could put a link in the description below if you like it, and it's about a hundred bucks and it's an XLR mic. So because it's an XLR mic, you're actually gonna need a little bit more things to make it connect to your computer. So you're either gonna have to have an XLR to 3.5 millimeter jack, so you really wanna put the XLR into an audio interface and connect the audio interface to your computer. But a decent audio interface can range you anywhere from 50 to hundreds of dollars. So I have myself a Focusrite Scarlet 2i4, and that's what my Shure SM58 goes in through XLR, and then that goes USB to my computer. Another thing you want to look into is a pop filter. So around the microphone head right here, I have a pop filter, which reduces the hard P's and T's and just doesn't spike your audio to zero decibels whenever a, a puff of air comes out of your mouth and hits the microphone. These reduce that, so you have very clear, non-fluctuating wavelengths when you do S's, P's, and T's. The next thing you want to do is when you're recording, you want to make sure that your mouth is 6 to 12 inches away from the microphone. The closer the better, but you really don't want to go beyond 6 inches because then you're going to kind of sound really muffled and bassy like way too much. So right here where I'm at is about 6 inches. Sounds really good. I could put it 12 inches away. This is roughly about 12 inches and it's still not going to sound bad. But you get the best vocal range and dynamic range when you have it roughly around this area. So let's say you have all the equipment ready and you're ready to record and make it sound good. Let's hop to that. So in here, we have Adobe Audition. It's not a free program. Adobe, you have to pay for these monthly subscriptions and they're not expensive. It's just, you gotta pay a monthly subscription for it. You can also use this in a bunch of audio editors. Another good free one is Audacity. And it's not going to be exactly the same as this. It may not have exactly the same features, but it's still really good step up from nothing. So let's go ahead and record a sample right here. We see me talking normally and I'm roughly around the negative 15 range, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and record a test. Hello, everybody. This is a test and I'm doing a lot of hard S's and T's and P's. And this is the test. So first thing you want to do is have this silence right here. You record silence before and after, a good chunk of it. There's a noise reduction feature in just about every single audio editing program. So in Audition, I'm gonna select this, hold Shift P, and that takes a sample of the noise. Control A, select the whole track, and then Control Shift P, and that brings up the noise reduction. So you can pause the video and copy these settings right here. It works for me really, really well. But you don't want to reduce the noise too much because then your whole thing is going to sound muffled. 
What this is going to do is use that sample as a reference and take out that noise in your entire audio track. So this is step one in my whole process. I hit apply, noise is gone. So it should be at zero dB pretty much the whole time. All right, so once we have reduced the noise in the entire track, we're gonna start a macro, or basically a auto chain of commands. That's something Audition does, which is really nice. Other programs may do it, but I don't know about those. So with this one, what we're gonna do is control A, select everything, and then we're gonna go to favorites, and we're gonna start recording a favorite. All right, now once we've started recording, we every effect we add on is gonna be saved. And so you don't wanna mess up, or you gotta stop the recording and then redo it. So, we selected the whole thing, we started recording. First thing I want to do is de-s it. Now, de-sing basically reduces the sharpness of the S's and makes them less ear piercing. So, we go to effects, amplitude and compression, dynamic processing. You can do de -esser right here, but I like the dynamics processing better. So, with this, you have three options, hard, light, and medium. Medium works best for me. Again, play with it. It may be a little different for you. You may have a more pronounced S than I do, but I like medium. So we hit apply. Now my whole track's de-essed. Next thing we want to do is hard limit it to 12. I don't want any of my peaks to reach more than negative 12. So anything higher or louder than negative 12 decibels, I'm going to cut it off. So I go effects, amplitude and compression, hard limiter, and then I do my hard limit to negative 12. So just look at these settings. You can copy them if you want and then I apply it, and that chops the tips off of these right here. So my audio is no more than negative 12 dB. Next is a fun one that took a really long time to get right. So you can pause it again to get these settings, but we're gonna do the Gain Grums Dynamic Processing, which is gonna raise the lows and reduce the highs to the best of its ability. Now this method does apply some echo, so just be wary when you're doing this. So we go to effects, amplitude and compression, Dynamics Processing, and then I have my Game Grumps version. So, pause it, I'm gonna put it right here in the middle of the screen. I'll zoom in on it, so you can just pause this and get it as close as possible. It's dang near impossible to get this exactly because you have to manually add these points and then put them in the places. So once you're done with that, we go ahead and hit Apply, and that raises the lows and reduces the highs. You can see it peaks almost at negative 5 dB now. It's almost negative 6 to negative 5 area. Then I'm going to amplify the highs of my voice. But before we get to that, I'm going to show you what it sounds like before. So I'm going to control Z real fast. And this is before the dynamics processing. Now I have, I've only de-essed it at this point. So I'm going to play it for you. Hello everybody, this is a test. And I'm doing a lot of hard S's and T's and P's. And this is the test. So that's that. Now with dynamic processing, the game room style. Hello everybody, this is a test and I'm doing a lot of hard S's and T's and P's and this is the test. Now to you that may sound like it just increased the volume, which it did, but it increased the volume of the lowest portions and my quietest portions and then kept the, didn't increase the volume as much for the louder portions. So that's what that does. Next thing I want to do is increase my highs and mids, make them more rich, but not too snappy because you can enhance these too much to where it sounds just ear piercingly terrible. So to do that, control A, then we go to effects, then we go to filter and EQ, graphic EQ 20 bands. Click on that. Now here's mine. So basically if you're looking at this chart, I'm no audio expert, but this is what I've gathered. This first third of all these is affecting the low frequencies of your voice. Then you get to the middle, and that affects the middle frequencies. And then you get to the high, and that affects the high frequencies. So roughly, that's what it is. Again, I'm no expert. This is just what works for me. So if you want to pause, you can copy these settings too, but you can adjust from there. So I'm going to apply these, and then we're going to play it again. This is with the highs enhanced. Hello everybody, this is a test, and I'm doing a lot of hard S's and T's and P's, and this is the test. And that is more enriched mids and highs. Next thing we're going to do is increase the lows in the bass, and we're going to add a little bit of more oomph to it, basically. So, again, to do that, control A, select everything, effects, and we're going to go to filter and EQ, and we're going to go to parametric equalizer. Now this one, I have a setting I like to use, so if you want to pause and use this, this is what works for me. Again, you could play around with this. The lower you go with this side, 
the less bass your voice has, the higher you go, the more it has. But it can sound terrible if you do it too high. So I'm going to apply this. And you're going to see it's kind of dragged the audio just a little bit below. It almost seems like it's drooping, but that's perfectly fine. So here's with the bass. Hello, everybody. This is a test, and I'm doing a lot of hard S's and T's and P's, and this is the test. And that was with the bass added. Here's without the bass added. Hello, everybody. This is a test, and, with and I'm doing, doing a lot of hard S's and T's and P's, and this is the test. So that's with the bass added. Again, you can play with that number. If you go to effects, filter, parametric, you don't have to go up to 13 decibels. That's just what I use because it sounds good to me. Uh, you really also want to be doing this with headphones on. But again, this is my settings. Play with it around. Yours may be different because everybody's voice is different. So next, we're going to quiet the loud parts by compressing them to a certain decibel. So down here, you see it went all the way down to looks like even negative 2.5 decibel down here. Up here, it's not so bad, but down here, we're gonna be reducing it to right about here, where negative six is. So we go to effects, amplitude and compression, single band compressor, click on that, and then I have a negative six dB compress, which is negative six, the ratio is 12 to one, and then zero, 100 milliseconds, zero. So pause it, copy these settings if you want, this is what works for me. Go ahead and hit apply. And that roughly brings everything down, basically quiets those peaks. Now you don't want to compress too much because then again, you're going to start sounding a little weird. So you want to do little limited compressions. So that's why I did a negative six, which is great. Once I've compressed it to negative six, what I like to do is hard limited at negative six. So whatever is still above negative six, it's just going to chop it off. So effects, amplitude, hard limiting. We're going to do this, negative six, enter. And let's save that. Negative six. OK. And then if you want to pause this and copy these, you can. It's negative six, zero, seven, hundred. Hit apply. And that chops it all off right here. You see just a flat cut. And then we want to normalize it, which is basically increasing the volume to a certain designated volume you want. So I'm going to do effects, amplitude and compression, normalize. And then I like to normalize it to negative two decibels because then when I put this into the video editor, I can reduce that as much as I want. So I like to normalize it to negative two and then bam, good to go. So this is the final output. Hello everybody, this is a test and I'm doing a lot of hard S's and T's and P's and this is the test. And that's my whole process. Now, again, if you remember earlier, we started this recording, if we go to favorites, stop recording, and we just say SYF voice. Hit OK. Then, if we wanted, I'm going to back all this up. Now, I can select everything and then go to Favorites and then go to SYF Voice. And it just does everything for me. Everything I just did, totally done. So, that's pretty cool. Another thing you can do is if you do Alt K, that brings up your keyboard shortcuts. Go down to your Favorites and then. This already has a shortcut on it, but it shouldn't, so I'm just going to show you. So your favorite you just recorded, you can you can assign a keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to do add. I'm going to make it G and then hit OK. So if I go back. So right here at this point, we've put our clip in, we've reduced the noise, and then we just select the whole thing and then hit G. And our noise is totally done. Our voice is completely done in one second or if you have a really long audio track it may take a little bit longer but for this portion very very quick so that's how you do it i'm going to show you the before this is the before hello everybody this is a test and i'm doing a lot of hard s's and t's and p's and this is the test and this is after Hello everybody, this is a test, and I'm doing a lot of hard S's and T's and P's, and this is the test. And that's how I get my voice. So, if this helped you out, drop a like, shoot a comment, I'm happy to chat. And if you like what you see, I got a bunch of Vegas and other tutorials and lots of gaming videos on my channel. Maybe you want to subscribe, that's cool too. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.